Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Wednesday, April 24, 2024. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, market didn't really get very far today. You'll see a 506 trend line on your screen and you'll see later when we get to inside the numbers. That was our pivot today. It was yesterday's prize, which they got to, and today's pivot, which they were not able to sustain price above. Tomorrow, mind you, we have a big economic data point, the phony GDP number, which gets revised about four or five times over the next several quarters up or down with a margin of error you can drive a semi through either way they're coming out with the number tomorrow markets will likely react pick a direction reverse to screw traders over and then we'll see if we get a larger move tomorrow is it going to be up or down we don't know ahead of time but what we can do is get prepared what do i mean by that well what happens if they pop the market up what am i looking for well, I'm still looking for the same thing we discussed over the last couple of days. I'm looking for 509 to 511, give or take, in that camp. I told traders in the live room today that if they got there today, it was a stone cold short up at 509. I told them exactly how I would trade it, what I would do. I would buy it with options, put options. I told them the expiration. I told them the strike all the information needed but guess what they didn't get there we'll do it again tomorrow now when you look at a two-hour chart and i'm going to use this chart to illustrate an example and also give a little bit of a chart lesson while we're at it you see or i see two things when i look at this chart i see a big up move and i see the market going sideways eating time off the clock building energy for another move higher what I also see inside of that concept is a would-be, could-be, maybe reversal candle on this two-hour chart. You can also see it as a potential pseudo-doji and a down candle on the hourly chart. But we'll go back to the two-hour chart and we'll say, all right, well, let's make a couple of assumptions which will give us clues going forward. Let's say this is a reversal candle. Well, guess what? They ran a test or attempted to make a test in the vicinity, not even close to the high, but in the vicinity of the high of that breakdown candle in the afternoon today. They didn't quite get there. What we do know is tomorrow, if they're trading lower, then that will be as a Monday morning quarterback situation, a reversal candle. But what we can do is we can say, hey, look, if they're above the high of this candle, 507.37, that will release the energy that would go to the downside with this reversal candle retracement wedge pattern. That would take you down here to do what? Start to run a test in the vicinity of this breakup candle low. 502, 501 and a half, 501 in that ballpark. But if the energy is going to go in the upward direction, then guess what we're focused on? 509. So we're going to use this two-hour chart reversal candle as somewhat of a pseudo indicator, not indicator in the sense of the indicators in your charting platform like the Mac Daddy and the RSI, heat maps and heat waves and all that stuff. We're talking about, and those are from Joe's Indicator Shop, we're talking about as a clue, as a hint. That's the term I'm using indicator from. We're going to use it as a bogey we'll do all that in the live room in real time as needed if needed tomorrow on thursday now check this out here's your weekly chart you came into the 20 week moving average last week's low you're bouncing off that that's garden variety normal every day every week type of chart behavior doesn't guarantee you that's going to happen but it happens all the time when we come into, not meaning we, but they, meaning Mrs. Market, comes into a moving average on a weekly chart that they haven't visited in quite a while, it's bound to be chart support from a self-fulfilling prophecy standpoint. 
Everybody's watching the 20 moving average. They're shedding their shorts. They're buying the long side around the 20 period moving average. They're looking for a bounce. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Buying begets buying. The market starts to bounce. More shorts cover. You get a little bit of a squeeze operation. You get a little bit of panic buying going in, chasers and all that stuff. And here we are up 130, 140 handles, whatever it is from Friday's low. Happens all the time. So look back over here. So the market was riding the 20 over here, so it's not the same. But since this 50 comes into play, you see it hadn't been there in a while. Yeah, they spiked it through, but what happened? Defense. Defense gets sent out onto the field. Special teams unit reverse the market back up. So on the upside, we have a couple of things. We have this trend line. That's a little higher than I'm talking about the stone cold short from a intraday perspective today and maybe even tomorrow but there's a zone there the swing traders will know about a zone it's also in that zone meaning there's a number and then a second number built into the lazy swing trader automagical algo system the second number is a little higher maybe a little shorter than the trend line but you do have that trend line and you know one thing let's say the trade is wrong how do you know it's wrong well you use the trend line, closing candles above the trend line, and you look just slightly over here and you say, well, wait a minute. You have a breakdown candle high, 515.30. Get above there. They'll also be above the trend line. And that would mean the trade has to be wrong until or unless they were back below. So the risk is defined. And that's the way we do this. That's the way you run this business. That's a lesson. I would rewind the tape. Watch that again, write it down. You can't take a trading opportunity unless you know where that trade is wrong. You have to have a defined risk. You can't say, I think it's going to work because I think it's going to work. Therefore, I'm going to jump in the trade because I have to be in a trade because I want the action. That's not what we're doing here. We're treating it as a business. Get out your sticky pads. As you can imagine, I like to teach lessons. I like to teach lessons in the live trading room. We do it constantly. I look at it as I'm paying it forward. I'm giving traders way more than they could ever bargain for. Learning, trading, making money. That's what the live room is all about. Help a brother out, pay it forward. If you think I give the good lessons, post it under the video. Let other people know what they can expect and what they can learn in the live trading room. Help a brother out, pay it forward, that's karma. Check this trade out from the live trading room. We had a target and overhead resistance in Tesla, about a two or three dollar spread, and in Tesla that's reasonable, it's a wild stock. We had a small bucket full of traders shorted Tesla up there, got paid handsomely. Live trade in real live time. While I'm making this video, I just noticed something. You look over here in the spiders. Something must have happened after hours. Somebody reported earnings or lack thereof, whatever it was. 502.65.70. Closing print today, 505.41. By the way, we're looking for volatility. Maybe there'll be some volatility tomorrow. Another live room, real-time situation. Uber was getting clobbered. 6797 6675 they came halfway home we know what that is it's called the midpoint phenomenon traders in the live room took uber down there those that did were paid accordingly uber what about inside the numbers what about the early morning commentary what were we talking about did anybody in the live room make money today were the numbers any good let's hear about it Let's hear about the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're an open forum. We started with yesterday's prize, which is today's pivot, 506. So I'm not coming up with that after the opening bell. What I'm doing is coming up with that at zero dark 30. This is like 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. Above opens a door for a trip in the northbound lane. They didn't do that. They couldn't do that. And the flip side situation is getting below the pivot, which opens the door for a leg lower, toward 504.35. And we have another number underneath, which you'll see in a few moments, 504.35.
And there was our first scalp slash base hit of the day. As you can see, we had patience, watched him come in to 504.35 in the live trading room. Inside the number members were notified long ahead of time. And when they got in there, it took about 20 minutes and then they started turning around. They provided the minimum required base hit. We never know which ones are going to give us the rocket ride. But what we do and talk about it all the time because it's that important. We take the base hits. We put them in our pocket. We do not, and I repeat, do not let the remaining portion of the trade, the trailing position, whether it's half, a third, or whatever it is to you, we don't let it go bad on us. And if we're left holding a base hit, we're fine with that because base hits put you in the Hall of Fame. That's how your account compounds because sometimes the base hits will turn into doubles, triples, whopper juniors, home runs, grand salamis, and the like. Remember, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart, and double-check the work. Now at about 8.55, we're looking for the morning trade. What do we have today? Still, we're looking for if they get below the pivot, 504.35. So even as we get closer to open, still singing the same song. Patience is what this business is all about. In the live room, we had lessons. We looked at other stocks, Tesla, others. We were all around the horn looking at stuff, teaching, learning, price levels in stocks, trading opportunities. But with the spiders, we were patient. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. If they don't give us what we want, we're fine with that. We'll come back another day to trade the spiders. There's other things. We have something for everybody. Speaking of something for everybody, I got an email from one of the members that was in the live room who took the wheat trade. We talked about wheat in the live room. This was a live room only trade. It's a long-term trade and it took off right out of the gate. We were buyers down here, 550, 552 in that neck of the woods. Heard from one trader today in email, Ragu says he's up 100%. That makes the rest of it a total free ride. Any trader that is in the wheat trade needs to take profit and let the rest ride. This is long term, but they're not going to go straight up for months and months and months. There's going to be the back and forth. As we get around these highs, expect some overhead resistance. 628, 29, 30, 40. In that neighborhood, there will be some overhead resistance. Remember, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. Now watch this, as we go up and read all this stuff, you know about 506, you know about 504.35, they didn't go any higher, so we don't have to worry about that. Now watch what happens here. They haven't got there yet, but the door's open for 504.35. If they do, it's a bounce place. Now, 504.35, we need a zone to play with, just in case. 503.07 is the other side of that zone. Now let's go see what that looked like. 503.07, 10, 5, was that other end, meaning the next number, creating a zone? What did they do? They came down to take a peekaboo at the next number and bounced right back up. This was your support zone. This is what it looked like on my chart in the live trading room before price got there. I said, this is a support zone, quote, unquote. It's what we call the box of support zone. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. And then what happens? If they start rallying later, if back above 504.35, the door opens for 505 and a quarter. Let's see what that one looked like. It's right in the middle here. And then the next number was back to 506, which they did do even into the end of the day before getting rejected into the close. 506 was the pivot. We had some stocks on the move today, but nothing hit their entry objectives. So they're all off the board. IWM, folks down at the camp IWM. They were down today, eh, a little less than one half of 1%. Spiders were mainly flat. They are my favorite market leading indicator. Wait till you see the trannies. Right now they're stymied, meaning the IWM by the 100 period moving average. Also, resistance up here at the convergence of the 20 and the 50. This is where they gap down to. So this is a natural place of a magnetic features. 
and also overhead resistance, magnetic properties. I'm not saying they will get there, but if they start to run up there, this area here will suck price in. That would likely coincide with the spiders being up at that 509, 510 or so area. What about the folks down at the transportation department? They got, as we say in the trading parlance, bludgeon today. They're testing the low from last week. When you compare and contrast the spiders to that, not even close. They're not even dropping. The IWM, not even close. The Qs, which we'll get to later, not even close. Why are the transports down near the low? Doesn't matter what the reason is. What matters is that they are and that it is my favorite canary in the coal mine. Beware. What I told traders in the live room today is one of two things will happen. Either the transports will resolve to the upside or the S&P and other indices will resolve to the downside. You can take that one to the bank. Even the IYT made a new low today. What about the Q people? Similar to the IWM, if they get close up into the convergence of these moving averages, they'll get sucked up in there, but they're going to first contend with this breakdown candle high at 433 and change. You can see in the after hours as it stands now, they're trading about $4 down from the closing bell. Here in the upper left-hand corner, bid and ask. Here's the extended hours trading. You can see this candle here. This is after hours. I'm sure it's some news event, whatever it was, earnings, some geopolitics. Maybe it was some, doesn't matter what it was. I don't really care what it was. They plug in the news after the fact. Why couldn't they get above 506 today in the spiders? What were they doing? Waiting on the news after the bell? XLF was flat today. They're above all the moving averages. The trend is your friend. Eating time off the clock for a couple of days above the 20 period moving average. Technically, there's nothing wrong with the XLF. They still could put in a lower high. They have a series of lower highs already. So you have highs and then you have lower highs and you have a lower high yet. So be weary above all the moving averages. It's bullish, drop back below, and they're likely putting in a lower high and you're going to have a C leg down. A little bit of a gap and crap with Smash Mouth today. The Philadelphia Semiconductor Index, SMH. Certainly a canary in the coal mine for the tech sector. All kind of gets sewn together when you see what's happening after the bell with the S&P. Down a little bit, you have a gap and crap in the SMH. You have the IWM down a little bit today. You have the canary in the coal mine, the transport's getting whacked. You can see how that all gets stitched together. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense market analysis.